This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. From Ramsey Network, this is The Ramsey Show, where we help you get control of your money, get ahead in your career, and get on the path to living well. I'm George Campbell, your host today, flying solo once again. The number to call, 888-825-5225. I would love to help you take the right next step with your life and your money. Maybe you're at a crossroads. You need some confirmation, some affirmation. You think you know what to do. You just need a random guy to tell you it's the right thing. Or you might need me to talk you off a ledge if you're about to cash out your 401k because you're scared the sky is falling. Happy to do either today on The Ramsey Show. 888-825-5225 is the number to call. We're here for you. America. Ann uh, is on the line, but so is Nicholas. So let's go to him first. He's in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Nicholas, welcome to the show. Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. Did that throw you off there? I was trying to just give you a little curveball. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, you can't I'm really face excited. Nicholas. Been... How can I help today? Um, so just want to start off by saying I'm a huge fan of the show and I'm a huge fan of Dave's work. Um, I'm a 23-year-old guy looking to... Um, you know, start my future right. And um, I have just uh, a couple little um, pickles I was hoping you could help me out of. I specialize in brine cucumbers. How can I help with that? What's going on? (laughs) So the first problem is, uh, unfortunately, two months ago, I was in a car accident and I totaled Mm -hmm. my car. And um, the the insurance company um, gave me $3,200. And um, you know, thankfully nobody was hurt. Good. Um, however, um, however, I'm kind of in dire streets at the moment. Um, luckily, um, my family has a, kind of a, a project car uh, that I've been driving around, but it's got about 175,000 miles on it. It's thrown check engine lights like crazy. We've already put, you know, as a family, we've already put over six to $7,000 into it. Um, and it's kind of, it, it's not a good thing to be driving around. It's, um, it's from 2004. Um, it's an old Jetta. So, um, I need a new car. That's the first thing. The second thing is, um, uh, I'm moving out to Roanoke this summer and, um, my rent is going up from $504 a month, um, to $960 a month. And, um, my yearly income is, Forty-two thousand um, dollars with uh, five thousand dollars in guaranteed bonuses, and then a twenty-five hundred dollar move expected. So it all evens out to about forty-nine thousand five hundred dollars. Good. And um, I just I just picked up a second job as well. I'm working home at Home Depot um, during nights because um, I kind of want to set up another buffer for myself. So. Um, you know that'll bring my yearly income up to about maybe fifty two thousand to fifty five thousand good okay that's awesome so how can I help today yeah. well um I've got twenty thousand um, dollars in student loan debt and um I really want to attack that um, as soon as possible because um, I don't like being in debt and um you know, I have a grace period until August 31st, and um, I was just wondering if you could help me lay out my priorities, because obviously I need a new car, um, but the car market is really not awesome right now. And, um, you know, I, I, there's different schools of thought, you know, some people saying I should finance. I don't want to finance because I don't want to take on more debt. Good um, man. I think, uh, I, you know... I, I I think I could probably get something reasonable for around um, six or seven grand. Um, You're correct. But with with my with my rent going up, um, you know, um, now that it's nine hundred sixty dollars a month, and that's utilities and everything included. Oh, good. So okay, I feel a lot better then. Yeah. So. Um, so how much debt do you have total? You got twenty k in student loans. How much other debt? That's it. Okay, good. And how much money do you have in the bank? Um, I have about 10500 This is fantastic news. Okay. And that includes that $3,200 check you got from the insurance company? 
that does. Yeah. Okay. So if I'm you, I'm filtering this through a very simple process called the baby steps. And so your step one is a thousand dollar emergency fund, which good news is you have that already in the bank. And then on top of that, I'm going to go get a car ASAP. That's like you said, probably a six, $7,000 car in this market, better than what you're driving now. Nothing fancy, but your goal is to find a decent deal in today's market, which is not impossible. Don't let people scare you off and say, well, the car market's impossible. Yes, it's not a great time to buy cars, but it's not a terrible time to buy a $6,000 car. It's going to be high mileage. I would go with a Honda or a Toyota. Uh, that would be my pick for you for reliability. And then beyond that, you probably will have, what, another $2,000 left over? Yes. Okay. And so then I would begin the debt snowball where you list your debts smallest to largest. So you have your student loans. Is it one student loan or multiple? Um, it's multiple. Okay. So list them out smallest to largest. Ignore the interest rate because this is all about behavior and progress right now. And start attacking that little one with a vengeance, with your side job, with all of your income. And I want you to be on an every dollar budget, a zero base budget where your income minus your expenses equals zero. Have you done a budget before? Yes. Okay. And I live off one right now. That's fantastic news. Well, I'm going to gift you uh, every dollar premium as well as Financial Peace University. It's all inside Ramsey Plus. You're go you'll get a one-year subscription. So hang on the line after we're done. Austin will gift you that uh, because I want to help you walk through this and get rid of this debt and get to a place where you have a foundation financially. You can breathe. Is, it, is, is things a little scary right now, a little t tense? Um, a, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Well, you're not scared to work, and that gives me a lot of hope for you because you're willing to do whatever it takes to get out of this debt, and that's the most important part. So as you start attacking this debt, you have a $1,000 emergency fund as a buffer for all the ankle biters. You'll be in a better car, and then the rest of the money and all future income, every dime that's not going towards – you know, keeping the lights on and getting some basic needs met, your food, utility, shelter, transportation, I want going towards that debt. And making 55000 maybe more if you ramp up these side hustles, I think you can pay this debt off within a year. Does that sound reasonable? Maybe does, 18 yeah. months? Yeah. Can I ask you a question, George? Sure. Um, so what do you think of my um, – I'm a little bit scared um, about the rent because I, I think really far into the future. And, and you know, I just um, I I kind of was was thinking of saving up so that I have um, the entire rent covered for the year. So I don't have to worry about that. Do you think that's a good line of thinking or something I should get rid of? I think that's a little bit of fear and paranoia. And I think once you start following these steps, you get rid of the debt. You have that starter emergency fund. And eventually, once you're out of debt, have a fully funded emergency fund of three to six months of expenses. You're going to feel a whole lot better. Now, if you want to, you can go and get a roommate if you want to split you know, the cost. Are you, is this a one-bedroom? Yeah, it's a one-bedroom. Okay, you may want to look at your options and see, hey, if a two-bedroom is 1200 bucks, well, that brings my cost down to 600 I don't think rent is going to be the biggest issue right now. Um, I think getting rid of this debt and getting on a firm financial foundation is what's going to give you that financial peace you're looking for. So hang on the line. Austin will pick up. We'll gift you one year of Ramsey Plus. Get plugged into Every Dollar Premium. Connect it to your bank. Track your transactions. Start attacking this debt. And call us back when you're debt-free, Nicholas. We're rooting for you, man. This is The Ramsey Show. Life is full of firsts. As the first and longest serving Christian health cost sharing ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ramsey personality, George Camel, host of the Fine Print and Entree Leadership Podcast, all of which you can find on The Ramsey Network and wherever you listen to podcasts. Flying solo today, so uh, keep me company, would you? 
The number to call is 888-825-5225. And if you're wondering where everyone went, no, the rapture didn't happen, okay? Left Behind, as great of a movie as it is, did not take place. There's no folded clothes here. They're just in Orlando. They're at the Entree Leadership Summit event. It's the final day. Some amazing speakers. John Deloney spoke there today. Jocko speaking this afternoon. I'm a little bit sad to not be there, but the folks in the booth and the folks in the lobby, they're keeping me company. We're having a good time. 888-825-5225. Okay, so if you've been watching the show for a little while, you know that we've added a fun new segment where we do some reactions to some videos floating out there on the internet. A lot of people think I'm just scouring TikTok, finding videos to hate on. It's not true. Our team does that. My friend Zach in the booth, that's what he does. It's his full-time job, is to just find things to get riled up about. Isn't that what social media is for these days? And so we found a video uh, about mortgages, and we get a lot of hate for our take on mortgages, that you shouldn't have one. It's a hot take, that you should pay your mortgage off because then you can really live and give like no one else and build wealth. So let's watch this video and uh, I'll let you know my thoughts after. Paying off your mortgage early isn't always a great idea. Let me show you why. Let's say that you have a $300,000 mortgage at a 4% interest rate for 30 years. Your payment is $1,400. You have an extra $1,000 that you can use to either pay off your mortgage faster or invest. Let's look at what happens in both cases. If you use your $1,000 to pay off your mortgage faster, you'll pay off your mortgage in 13 years and save 120 k worth of interest. Now start investing all of that 2400 17 years later, you'll have a million dollars, assuming an average 8% return. Now let's look at if you invest the $1,000 instead of paying off your mortgage. Over the same 30 years, you'll pay $128,000 more in interest, but you'll have $1.4 million in investments. Paying off your mortgage early would cost you $300,000 in total wealth. That's a lot of money. Sure, you've saved a bit on interest, but you lost money in the long run. That's why it's so important that you understand the way personal finance actually works. That way you can crunch the numbers and choose the path that makes the most financial sense for you. Oh, so that's how personal finance actually works. Oh, my goodness. Well, if I had known that, I would have gotten to way more debt because apparently you can make millions by going into debt and staying in debt. Okay. A lot of numbers were thrown out there. You can, you can ignore the numbers for now. It's too much to keep in your brain. I tried to write some of it down. It's just too much. But here's the deal. Uh, as a guy who paid off his house, and some people have said, well, that was a dumb thing to do. You should have invested the money. Listen, it's hard enough for me to sleep at night with everything going on in the world, but I sleep a whole lot better knowing my home is paid for, and I don't owe anyone anything. And here's the thing. People come at us and go, well, you'll, you, you still have taxes and insurance, so you'll always have payments. You must be real fun at parties if that's how you think and talk to people. So when it comes to the mortgage, you're right. On paper, you can do better. If life works out perfectly for you and you magically have an extra $1,000 sitting around, which news alert, most Americans don't because they're broke, then yes, on paper, if it works out perfectly and you get your exact return every single year and uh, you get that exact mortgage scenario, sure, you could end up with a few hundred grand more. But the truth is 99.9% .9 of Americans aren't doing that, will not do that, can't do that. They don't have extra money laying around. And if you think that if I did have extra money, it would all go towards investing because I'm such a, an astute investor. You're also wrong because we know lifestyle creep happens, life happens, a vacation pops up, a wedding pops up, a funeral. Life just happens. HVAC goes out. And so what happens is the people that do that generally don't have an emergency fund, don't have extra money. And if they do, they're probably hanging out in Reddit threads, you know, talking about how much Dave doesn't know about personal finance which is totally fine. You are entitled to your opinion. It is a free country, and you're entitled to, have, uh, to be wrong. That's part of freedom. So to that point, here's what I'll say. That video is clearly geared towards younger people, which frustrates me because young people in their 20s are starting to fall for these traps, and they're starting to believe that debt is a tool to be leveraged, and you can create so much wealth by leveraging debt. And so to that, I say, what if we didn't have payments and we invested the money. What would that turn into? How much life could we live in the meantime before retirement? Before we have $1.4 million, there's a lot of life in between, isn't there? We want to raise families. We want to send our kids to college debt-free. We want to go on amazing vacations. We want to give generously. And what I have found is that payments in your life hold you back from doing all that in the meantime. 
over the next 30 years of your working life. And so that is why I advocate for paying off your mortgage early. And we've debunked many times the idea of the, oh, you guys should hang on to your mortgage for the tax deduction. No, we debunk this all the time at our live events in Financial Peace University. You're trading a dollar for a quarter. If you're keeping your mortgage around for the tax deduction because you want to pay your lender $10,000 instead of sending the IRS $2,500, that's just bad math. So all that to say, uh, please stop making videos that are hurting young people. I want them to win financially. I want them to live a debt-free life, not only because of the financial side, but the psychological side, the spiritual side. We're seeing so much anxiety and depression with these younger generations, and a huge part of that is because of money fears, money problems, money issues. And so I think if we can get rid of that aspect, we can then focus on other things. We can be more selfless focus on others more, find opportunities where we can help others because we're not so focused and dialed in on our own money problems. So that's my encouragement to you guys. Uh, Take it as you will. That's TikTok for you. Anne joins us up next in Tampa, Florida. Anne, welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. How can I help today? So I had a question about um, IRS debt and where that should fall in the debt snowball. Okay. How much debt is this? So, well, it's kind of hard to say because it's never shown up in my account. I've, you know, I called them finally, and it's, you know, they just haven't finalized it. Probably roughly about fifteen thousand. Okay, is this kind of back taxes or? Um, no, I I get alimony, and you know, when I was awarded the alimony, I guess I didn't realize, you know, that they account don't take the taxes out of yeah. So okay. That kind of got me in a mess for quite some time. I'm trying to get – I'm still at the point where every year, you know, I owe them anywhere from seven to 10000 mm. So I'm trying to get off the hamster wheel. Are you working <laughs> with a tax professional right now, or have you been doing it yourself? I finally did this. No, I, this year I went to, um, you know, one of the Ramsey tax professionals, and, you know, he gave me some advice. I just I can't – it's not really realistic right now. I, I basically need to make less income. Need to you make know, less I, income. That's a well, – I don't like you know, that. I need to invest – well, cause I, because I, I make like 108000 okay. so I end up getting taxed. I don't know. It's just a mess. It's a hot mess. Well, if you so move I'm into a tax bracket, it's not it. like you owe that entire amount. You would just owe the overage into that new tax bracket. Right. And Anyways. I've tried to – you know, I usually do my paychecks. I have an extra – 150 or 200 taken out in taxes on that. And then I do, you know, I do all sorts of stuff and I still end up this year with 7,200. Okay. Well, I'll let you work Um, out with your tax pro. How much other debt do you have? uh, About, I have about 20,000 in a car. Um, What's the car worth? Probably about 20. I probably am upside down in it because the car broke down kind of before I got in the program didn't have any emergency fund to fix it, so I had to. So I, you know, mm. bought a new car. Okay. What other debt out, do you have? That one in, so. uh, credit cards of about 17 and student loans about 5500 Okay. And you say your income is mortgage. like 108 Yeah. Okay. Well, we put IRS debt at the very top of the debt snowball because you don't want that monkey on your back. And so we want to get rid of that one as soon as possible. So that's the one I would focus on first, and then I would attack the rest of them. And I would look at selling the car. If you're not underwater on it, if you can use that 20K, slap 15 there on the IRS debt, get rid of it, buy a $5,000 car. I like that plan a whole lot. That's my goal for you, is to get through this as fast as possible, get rid of the IRS so you can focus on the rest of the debt, become debt-free, and now you're making six figures with no payments. That is the future I want for you. Thanks so much for the call, Ann. This is The Ramsey Show.
if you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular and roller shades, or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit, whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. Inflation is affecting everyone right now, from the gas pump to the grocery store. And while you can't control what happens with the economy, you can control what happens with your money. And the only way to control your money in uncertain times is to get on a budget. Pay attention to where your money's going. And the best way to do that is with every dollar. With every dollar, you'll plan out your monthly budget and track all of your expen expenses throughout the month. Plus, the Every Dollar mobile app lets you check your budget from anywhere so you can always make the right money decisions. And when you get on a budget, you will be in total control of your money and you'll give yourself a raise. So start budgeting for free today by going to RamseySolutions.com slash Every Dollar. Open phones this hour, 888 825 is the number to call. Travis joins us up next in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Travis, welcome to the show. Hey, George. How's it going? Great. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm just uh, wanting to see if you could answer my question. I'm navigating a little relationship advice here. Ooh, okay. This is fun. What's going on? I've got the opportunity to sell the current home I'm in in this inflated market and us move back to a rental property and be completely debt-free. Um, my wife currently runs a business out of our home due to the HOA at the property we'll be moving to. She would no longer be able to do that. Mm. But again, there will be no mortgage, so there would be no need to have to do this. Um, just trying to find a way to navigate it peacefully. So is this a side business for her? Or does she do this full time? Um, she does it full time, but I'm the primary breadwinner. And it's just something where she started doing in the last three years and really found fulfillment in it. And I hate taking that joy away from her, but this thing, I mean, we'll both be fully with no mortgage and no debt. Now, when you say no mortgage, you'll be renting at this new property? No, this was my, we owned this home, and when we moved to our current house, we've been renting this out, and we had the opportunity to take advantage of the inflated market and pay off um, that rental property and live there debt-free. Okay, so how much debt do you guys have? Um, the only thing we have is the the two mortgages and maybe about fourteen thousand in credit card debt. Okay, so fourteen k in credit card debt, and you've got two mortgages: one on on the spot you're living in now, and one on the rental property. Yes. But you're saying if you sold your current home, you could pay off both mortgages and the credit card debt, and walk away with probably a net of around one hundred fifty thousand. Nice. I mean, on paper, this looks real good, but you're saying this is a relationship issue because she's what she's not wanting is, well, if we move, I can't do this business anymore. Right. And your argument is, well, you won't need to. Right. I'm, you, you won't know, need the money. She, she, right. She runs a pet sitting business, and so I'm like, volunteer at shelters, donate your time. You know, there's, there's no need to have to do it to, for monetary gain. And she's been doing the pet sitting business at the house. Yes. Why can't she go to people's houses and pet sit? That was my thing. A lot of the overnights, I think her clients that trust her and really value the, the you know the professionalism that she offers would let her transition that into overnights in their home instead of having to bring them hours. Does she want to turn this into like a brick and mortar pet boarding business one day, or is this just kind of a for fun? Right if now? if it got busy enough, yes. And I've even entertained the idea that. With no mortgage and no debt, this may be something that both her and I can pursue without me having to even continue my day-to-day. -day. 
I think that's the selling point for me. If I'm you sitting in your shoes, I'm going to her saying, hey, I want you to have the freedom to expand this thing and really grow it. And I know temporarily it feels like we're moving backwards, but man, not having any payments, that frees us up to do some things. What's yeah, your household we income? Vehicles. We both pay cash for our vehicles when we bought those. They're about seven years old. And then just really pretty much that small credit card debt and the mortgages is all we have left. So what's the total debt between the mortgages and the credit card debt? Um, between the mortgages and the credit card debt, you're probably looking at around, let's see, quick estimate, probably around 235 Okay. And how much could you sell the house for? Um, around four net after fees and closing and everything around four twenty one. Four twenty one. That's what you would net. That's and everything on the house. Yes. And then well, then there's another. Then after all that, the sixty two thousand on paying the rental off. Okay. And so you're saying we'll crush the two thirty five in our debt. We'll have a fully funded emergency fund immediately. Are you guys <laughs> investing right now? Um, yes, we both have been investing in our 401ks now for quite a few years, so we're, we're doing pretty well there. Okay. Well, our plan is you don't invest until you've got the consumer debt paid off, so you're doing things a little bit out of order, but uh, what's your household income? Um, approximately 140 Okay. Now, if she stopped doing this pet sitting business, what would it go down to? Uh, about 110 Okay. Now, with 110 and no payments, how much margin would you guys have left at the end of the month? Oh, ridiculous. Like a few thousand bucks? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, without even changing spending habits, we're probably saving 1600 a month. That's that not would, bad. That, so right, that, that would that be my selling point to her. Mortgage. I think you start with the math, but then you appeal to the emotional side of what this means for her dreams. And does she really does she want to continue doing this? Or could she explore a different career path altogether that she's more passionate about? And so I would look right. at it as what kind of options does this give us as a family? Okay. And uh, if right. if she says heck no, you're, if this is going to be a real rift in the relationship, then I don't know that it's worth going through this process. I mean, you guys aren't broke, right? No. You could still pay off your debt and do all of that while living where you live. We could, but okay. you know, with you know, with the way the, the economy is looking now, you know, you're we're one slip away from a, a, a pretty good financial uh, you know collapse, and I would like to be preemptive as possible. I think you you pitch that to her too, and say, hey, I don't feel like we're financially secure with these double mortgage payments we're making every month, and man, what would it feel like to have not a payment in the world, and the world is our oyster now, and you can pursue what you want? Are you guys moving to a different town, or is this still in the same area? Um, it's relatively close. Okay. So it's not like you're uprooting your life. You're not moving to, no. you know, Des Moines going, hey, well, this is this will be great for us. Right. You're still keeping your been, life. It's been great for the most part because we've had the same renter since we've moved out of the house. And so it's been contingent on us not having to cover two mortgages as long as it, we had renters in. And I've always told her if that was something that wasn't in place, then you're looking at us covering two mortgages. Now we would have, have nothing to worry about. Now are you going to kick this tenant out that's living there right now? Yes, I've already spoke with them, and they're, they're looking for other um, other places to go. Okay, good. Well, this sounds like a pretty clean break for me. If I'm in your shoes, I'm doing it. But to your point, this is a harder conversation with your wife, and you, she's got to be on board. You can't do this against right. her will. And so finding out – get to the root of, of what her fears are. Maybe you guys go on a date and go, hey, what's really going on here? Because I right. want the best for you. I want you to do what you want to do with your career. And if that's pet sitting, we're going to find a way to do it. And when we don't have debt, we're going to have way more ways to do it, even if right. temporarily we can't do it inside the home. Right, yeah. And people will always be willing to pay good money to have their pets taken care of, even their horses. Oh, they will. Yeah, it surprised me how well the, the business took off as quickly as it has. That's awesome. Well, I think you, you look on paper and go, hey, how could we grow this business? You start helping her dream about what this could turn into, and then it's less about selling the house as the point of contention, and it becomes more about how can we get to where you want to go. Okay. So I would set that vision with her and get on the same page, get on the same plan, and show her the numbers as part of it. I don't know how much math is going to appeal to her because right now it sounds like it's a lot. there's a lot of emotion tied to this. Oh, you're right. When I when I you know start breaking down the math, she's like, I get I get the numbers, mm -hmm. and then she starts going back emotionally on what what having to be given up. Yeah. Well, I think this is a temporary setback for her uh, that eventually is going to turn into something great. I can't wait for you to call back and go, man. She started her own pet boarding business. It's brick and mortar. She's crushing it. She's making more than me. I've joined her in the business, and life is great. 
Yeah, sounds great. That's my hope for you, man. Thank you so much for the call. That's a tough one. A lot of people call in and the numbers make sense, the math works out, but there's a relational piece that you have to grapple with. You got to go, how do we get on the same page? And this looks different for everyone. For some people, just doing the math, just showing them the interest we're throwing away on our payments, that can be enough to get you riled up. For me, it is because I'm a giant nerd. For a lot of people, you got to appeal to the emotions, get to the root of it, help them dream about the future instead of worrying about the present and all kinds of fears. But you got to get to the root of the problem, the real root, if you want to get somewhere together. And that's my hope for everyone, because once you get on the same page, man, you are an unstoppable couple who's going to charge hell with a water pistol. This is The Ramsey Show. personality and I am your host today riding solo it's free call 888-825-5225 let's talk about your life and your money Christina joins us up next in Chicago Christina welcome to the show thank you for having me absolutely what's going on with you um so I'm just starting to get started here and try and figure out a budget and I was wondering how do you plan or budget in expenses for a newborn. I have a four-month-old currently, so I'm just trying to figure out how you put that into your uh, monthly budget. Fun. Congratulations. Thank you. So four months old, how's it been going? Pretty good. And how have you covered expenses so far? Have you kind of just been winging it and you're going, I don't know if I'm doing this right? Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) Okay. Well, you know, when you have that newborn, it's just going to add a line item to your budget. So it shouldn't add, you know, thousands of dollars every month. You're probably looking at a few hundred bucks so far. Does that sound right? Yeah, pretty much. It's not. It hasn't been too bad, luckily. Um, but yeah, I'm just starting to kind of figure out when we start doing daycare and everything like that, how to just kind of. Yeah. Do you guys have any debt? Uh, yes. How much? We we have about seventy five thousand in student loans, thirty in a car, and about five in credit cards. Okay. And what's your income? Uh, about 120. Cool. And what does care look like right now for that four month old? Uh, well, my husband's a teacher, so he'll be off for the summer. So we're not, um, uh, we don't have to figure out care until August. Um, but we got some estimates and that's looking at about like a thousand dollars a month. Is that the part that's kind of stressing you out going, how do we even fit this in the budget? Yeah, pretty much. Cause I'm guessing right now you don't have an extra thousand dollars laying around. No, we're pretty tight. Mm, I'm sorry to hear that. Okay. So I think if we got rid of this debt, life would feel a lot more peaceful, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Okay. So I want that to be your focus. Now, baby's home, baby's healthy, right? Yes. And so outside of the basic budget line items, we don't need to go get all the fancy tech for the baby. It's going to be okay. But I would start making a list of all the things that are monthly expenses and then make a list of things that are maybe yearly expenses or kind of a sinking fund, things like checkups, doctor visits, things like that, where you know it's coming up, you know what your co-pays are going to be, you kind of know how often you're going to be visiting, you know what, you know, basic clothing is going to cost and all of that. So once that's in the budget, I would start going, okay, what is it going to take to create $1,000 worth of margin by August or by September? Right. And once you do that, it kind of gets you to be creative and you start making a plan going, all right, what areas could we shave? What are the expenses right now? And that might mean getting, uh, you know, your husband taking on a side job outside of teaching. Can he work this summer? Uh, yeah, he can. Okay. So what if he could pick up a job and he could save up 12 grand or start paying off some of this debt to free up some of these payments so that you could find this thousand dollars in your budget? Right. No, that's a good idea. 
And so I think when you start getting creative going, all right, if we know debt is off the table, we're not going further into debt, we want to clean up this mess, what does it look like to find $1,000 a month? And uh, I think then that's when you start to go, what are these expenses? What can we shave down? What can I go get at Goodwill? What can I borrow from a friend? What is any way to stop spending money? And then what are some ways we can make more money? And once you add those together and you get rid of this debt, which I'm looking at, how much is this car worth? Um, probably about 36. Okay. Uh, this, this might hurt, but I think right now the, this baby takes precedence over driving a nice car. Would you agree? Yeah, we had gotten it because we, my car was, um, had a hundred thousand miles on it in 2014. So we bought the new car last year and thinking that we were going to need it for the baby. Well, I'll tell you this, you sell that car for 36,000 and you owe 30, that gives you six grand. Maybe scrape up some extra money and get an eight grand car, and uh, the baby's going to be just as safe in that car as a thirty six thousand dollar car. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And so that to me already gives me a little bit of peace because you just knocked out a huge chunk of almost a third of your debt right there. Right. And now we're going, okay, we have the student loans, we can knock out these credit cards real quick, and then we just have the student loans. So now you freed up a car payment and the credit card payment. What do those add up to? The credit card and the car payment? Yeah. Uh, that would be about 35. So what is that? Add, for the year. Okay, for the year. So what does that up to in your monthly budget? What, what are those payments that you're making every month? Uh, so the car, it's 500, and the credit card um, is probably about 250. Okay. So now I'm going, oh my gosh, we just found $750 in our budget. You just gave yourself a right. raise. And now with a side yeah. job, if we can just get an extra two fifty a month, we can afford daycare no problem. And now we just have the student loans. Do you see? You feel the excitement when you start to knock out some of this debt and get those payments out of your life? Absolutely. Okay. So that would be my plan. I'm finding any, any way to make more, to spend less, to get rid of this debt as soon as possible. And if I'm you guys, I'm selling the car. And that might hurt for now, but I promise you the baby's just as safe in that car. Obviously get something fairly reliable. I'm not asking you to drive a beater around, but an $8,000 old minivan, SUV, whatever it is, will get you around just fine. And remember, this is temporary. Because you're going to get an upgrade once you're out of debt. You have a fully funded emergency fund. Daycare's taken care of. Now we can go upgrade that car. Thank you so much for the call. Gavin joins us up next in Kansas. Gavin, welcome to the show. Hi, George. Hey. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. What's going on? Well, um, I have a, a dilemma here, and I wanted to run it by you. Um, I'm, my question is whether I should uh, take this next semester off of school or kind of tort college in a way that would make it feasible. And in my particular situation, I'm 21 years old. I've got one more year left. I'm in June. Just got done my junior year. Awesome. And I'm completely debt free thanks to uh, the baby steps. Uh, borrowing money's not on the table. Just wanted to make that clear. Fantastic. <laughs> but I'm in sales right now. Um, I. Uh, sell uh, vehicles for General Motors. And so I'm in a sales position now. However, uh, with my classes being more nuanced for senior year to graduate, they're right in the middle of the day. And with scheduling, um, it appears that I'm not going to be able to make the amount of sales that's going to allow me to continue cash flowing school. Okay. What is it going to cost uh, for this last uh, year? So the cost, yep, the cost for school is 19000 per year or about $1,500 a month. Okay. And you've got no money right now. Um, Do you have any money saved up? I've got about eight hundred bucks. Eight hundred bucks to your name. No debt yeah. though. No debt. Okay. So, is there anything else you could do at night? Choose a different sales job to keep the income going. I could. I could. Um, I could do some side hustles like pizzas or something like that. Um, yeah. My thought though it. When I am not in school, my income uh, track record has been probably about 5000 a month or so. Um, when I'm not in school, that's me just focusing, grinding 60 hours a week at my, my, my job. And so I'm, I'm toying around with this idea of taking a semester off to save up some money. Uh, so that way I can continue cash flow in it. I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's your last ditch option. I don't know that it'd be my first. I'm going to try to cash flow this thing. Are you working this summer? Or do you have uh, yes, I am. Okay. Could you work this summer and really grind and get 19K saved up and just pay for, or pay for a semester at a time? I, I could. I, I could. I, I think. Um, so then you're I, looking at what? Eight. Kind of a little. Nine grand, not, about nine grand a semester? 
Yes. Okay. So my thing is, can you get nine grand for the summer to pay for the semester, then during the semester work more to save up another nine grand to pay for the final one? I probably could. It's probably going to be pretty tight. Well, I'm okay with tight if it means you're graduating, and uh, once you're, you've graduated completely debt free, and you're graduating, you know, at least six months earlier. That's true. So it's I true. think that's my first option. And if you're going, this is impossible. I don't want it to burn you out, but dude, you're young. You're 21. You've got more energy than I do at this point. So that would be my <laughs> goal: is to do whatever I could to find any side hustles. It doesn't have to be sales. Anything where you can make a lot of money quickly. Sure. I'd be focusing on that. And if you can get through school debt-free without taking a gap, I'm good with that. If you have to take the gap, I'm still proud of you for graduating debt-free. So either option is great with me. Just don't go into debt, and uh, you'll thank us all later. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. My thanks to Austin and Will and Kelly, Zach and Andrew in the booth keeping the show afloat. And you, America, appreciate you guys listening. We'll be back with you before you know it. Love a good Dave rant? Want to see the latest Ramsey Show videos going viral? Check out your favorite moments from The Ramsey Show on YouTube. Go watch and subscribe to The Ramsey Show channel on YouTube. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. From Ramsey Network, this is The Ramsey Show, where we help you get control of your money, get ahead in your career, and get on the path to living well. I'm George Camel, and I will be your host today, flying solo as the rest of our team finishes out the Entree Leadership Summit event with about 3,000 business leaders in Orlando, Florida. It's been a great time there as our team has been watching the live stream back home here. Jocko is taking the stage right now. Pretty epic. I'm pretty much baby Jocko. I've been told that in the past. Kelly's looking at me with a face, so we're just going to get to the phones here. Free call, 888-825-5225. Let's talk about your life and your money. Let me help you take the right next step and work through whatever you're working through. John joins us up first this hour in Grand Rapids. John, welcome to the show. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I am overwhelmed, but still way better than what I should ever be. That's a beautiful take. Uh, so well, uh, let me help you get whelmed today. How's that? And that sounds uh, absolutely fantabulous. <laughs> um, What's going on in your situation? Home. Quick breakdown, um, both my wife and I are 20. Uh, my wife is six months pregnant. Um, doing, of course, about three months. Um, we had, so about three months ago, we started to remodel the house with about, with money that we had above and beyond our emergency fund. Well, since then, we had about seven to $8,000 worth of unexpected bills come up, and I got a new chart to me, now to sell my old one, uh, I should have been able to make a couple grand when I did that. I was, hey, speak directly on your phone for me, John. You're cutting in and out. Is this a little bit better? Yes. Okay. Okay. So you've got All a right. new to you truck. Yeah. All right. That's where you left um, off. Okay. Um, paid six grand for it. My old one should have been able to sell for eight and cannot sell it. And that was the stupid part was that was supposed to be our emergency fund with that. I was expecting a quick flip on my old truck, quick sell, but it's not selling. And we have absolutely no money now in our, um, in our savings because of that. And, uh, my wife informed me this morning that she needed tires like yesterday. And so I checked it out and we had to get herself a brand new set of tires and, um, Work right now is a little bit rocky. I just had my three month inter- three month meeting, and it did not go too hot, and so I'm scared to take overtime. Okay, so let me recap here. 
Uh, how much debt do you guys currently have? Um, just like 500 bucks from the tires from this morning. Okay. Do you put those on a credit card? Yeah, I did. How much money do you have in the bank? Um, nickel and diming everything, probably about there. Um, we'll get rid of that little bit of debt um, by Friday. Tomorrow, my paycheck is sitting, and uh, Friday, my wife is. Okay. So right now, how much money do you have in the bank? Not counting the five hundred dollars um, on credit card. That's about it. Okay, so pretty much zero dollars to your name currently until this paycheck hits. Yeah. And you drain the emergency yeah. fund uh, to pay for these random emergencies, plus you paid for the truck with the emergency fund, hoping you'd flip the other one. Yeah. Okay, so why can't you sell this other truck that's worth 8000 I have no idea. I have it listed for seven, and no, there's absolutely no interest. Where is it Unless listed? someone wants to... Um, I have it on 26 different groups on Facebook and Facebook Marketplace. Okay. Have you checked with some of these companies like Carvana or Room or local dealerships to see what they would buy it for? Um, not a whole lot. Um, there's pretty much around me, there's just a whole bunch of little mom and pop places. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to keep pushing to sell this truck ASAP because right now it's just sitting there, right? You have two trucks? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Like in, That's my A1. It, at all. it hasn't been on the road in three weeks. Is there anything wrong with the truck? Are the photos good? What do you think is wrong um, with it? Why it's not selling? Just just typical cosmetic. Okay. What's your household income? Uh, right around 55. Okay. And your wife is currently working? Correct. Will she work outside the home once baby's here? Um, yeah, she will. She will take the first little bit um, and stay home with the baby, but she she loves what she does too much. She said she doesn't think that she can stay home. So she'll <laughs> so go back to work, work, right straight to work after maternity leave? Correct. Okay. Well, I know life has been punching you in the face, man, but the good news is you're you're not that far in the hole. You're $500 in debt. When these paychecks hit, you'll be able to pay that off. And then your focus is going to be saving up for this baby. Mm -hmm. So I want you to start working on that fully funded emergency fund slash baby fund. And once baby is here and safe, then we can move on to our other goals. But A1 in the next three months is to sell this truck, work your tail off to stack up as much money as possible. Would that give you some mm -hmm. peace of mind and let you breathe a little easier? Well, my, my only concern with um, at least taking overtime is I'm already kind of rocky here with this job. so Rocky is in what? I just had my three-month interview last week. or Sorry, not interview, review, and it was not too hot. So you're basically on a probationary type period right now. Yeah, correct. So they feel like you're not performing at the level you should be. Correct. What kind of work are you doing? Uh, construction. Okay. Are there other construction jobs out there that would pay equal or more if this thing fell um, through? The answer is yes. It was I a trick have, question, John. There are some. There's not a whole lot. Um, the, most people around here, they've all worked with each other. The previous guy that I worked with, everyone knew that I worked with them, and they wouldn't even return my phone calls because they wanted to honor my previous employer. Okay. Well, I'm going to do what I can to not biff this job here. And then on top of that, I'm going to go find other side hustles, maybe outside of construction. Maybe it's handyman work. I don't know what your skill set is, but find something that can pay, you know, 20, 25 bucks an hour in this market. I think that's really reasonable. And for the next, th this is temporary, remember, but for the next three months, your job is to stack up as much money as possible, avoid going into debt. Because once this 500 bucks is gone, you're in baby step three, working on the emergency fund and kind of taking this pause to go, we got to stack up money for this baby. Baby, make sure mom and baby are healthy, and then we can take a deep breath and figure out what life looks like. Yeah. But right now, there's no time for excuses. There's no time for, well, I don't know if there's – dude, you are got to be hustling, grinding because you're about to be a dad, and I want you to be able to take care of your family and do it with some dignity. Mm -hmm. 
So that's my A1. If I'm in okay. your shoes, I feel the pressure, man. I'm not trying to say this is going to be easy, but for 90 days, if you can just dial in and focus, and I want to help you get there, I'm going to gift you one year of Ramsey Plus. So hang on the line. Austin will pick up. It includes Financial Peace University. It includes Every Dollar Premium, our budgeting tool. That will give you some peace of mind, some control over where your money's going and some next steps. That's what I want for you. Good luck with the baby. Hope for everything to go smoothly, healthy, and happy for you all. And uh, thanks for the call, man. This is The Ramsey Show. Look, I love real estate and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey to start your approval or get more information. I'm George Camel, Ramsey Personality, and I will be your host this hour. Open phones, 888-825-5225. That is the number to call. Let's talk about your life and your money. Marie is up next in Seattle. Marie, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Absolutely. What's going on with you? Um, I've been budgeting. Well, my husband and I have been budgeting, um, and we're trying to get rid of our debt, and we're trying to do like the snowball effect. But I was wondering, we have three credit cards with a total amount of debt for those credit cards around twelve grand, I think, right now. Okay. Um, would it be more beneficial to add, put all those credit cards onto one, all those balances onto one credit card versus having three separate payments? No. No. What, what do okay. you think the benefit is? You know, I wasn't sure if having them on one credit card would lower the amount of interest, but I wasn't sure if the cash, because it's considered a cash advance when you pay off something like that, I wasn't sure if that interest rate would end up charging more. Mm. I mean, in rare scenarios, you might get a better interest rate, but right now, what I love about them being separated is you feel the progress. If you're staring at one mountain of $12,000, it kind of takes your breath away a little bit. But when you see one that's $3,000 and you see one that's $5,000, you go, okay, let's attack the small one first. Let's get rid of that payment. It frees up some money. Then let's attack the next one. It frees up a little bit more money. And then you see the light at the end of the tunnel. And you go, oh, my gosh, we can do this stuff. And so that's why I'm not a fan of consolidation when it comes to uh, general consumer debt. What's your income, household? Um, Around $60,000. Okay. And is this all of your debt, or is there other debt that you have? No, there's other debt. We don't have any car debt. Um, we have student loans. I think he has about 5000 and I have eleven. Okay. So if I'm you guys, I'm going to list this out from smallest to largest and roll with the debt snowball method, which means uh, the credit cards, the student loans, we're going to lump these all in a giant list and list them out from smallest to largest, and we're not going to write down the interest rate. We don't care about that right now because I want you to feel some momentum and some progress. So what's the mm-hmm. smallest debt? Um, one of the credit cards, and I think it's three grand. Three grand. Okay. Now mm-hmm. – how much margin do you guys have left at the at the end of the month after making all of your minimum payments and covering all of your bills? I think like four hundred dollars. Okay, so you have four hundred dollars extra to put on that first smallest debt of three thousand dollars. 
Yeah. So if we do that for, let's just say we stay status quo as is, we're talking about six, seven months to get rid of this first debt. Correct. Yeah, that seems doable. Okay. Yeah. Now my question is, how do we speed this up? Because I, I, I'm okay with sacrifice for a short time, but I want it to be as mm-hmm. quick as possible. So what does it look like to get your income up right now or to cut expenses? To cut expenses is, it's just new for me to cut. I, I'm not really a spender, um, but we had a baby like a lot of your people today. Um, That's fun. So Congratulations. I'm a mom. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm a stay at home mom, but I'm also working as a college intern um, and I get to pick my hours. So lately I've been working more hours or trying to work more hours so we can get more income. And then my husband's also working overtime. That's awesome. What is the, does the internship pay? Yes. Okay. What does that pay? Um, sixteen twenty nine an hour, I think. Okay. And that's part of the 60 grand household income? Yeah. And then what does your husband do? He's a correctional officer. Cool. Can he work overtime? Yes, and he is. Can he work even more overtime? He could, yes. I like this plan a lot. Because then I go, okay, you have $400 of margin. What if we had 600 How would that speed up the process? What if we had 800 Yeah. And so that's where you start to get excited and not feel like this is a slog. And most people I found, yeah. they pay off their, all of their consumer debt within 18 to 24 months if they follow our plan. And really? so if, if, you, if you do the math on this and you do the debt snowball, you list it all out and you go, this is going to take us three years, then that tells me we've got to change something. We've got to up the income. We've got to cut every subscription. We're not getting cable. We're selling the TV. We're selling the couch. We're sitting on a folding chair. Whatever we've got to do to get out of debt as fast as possible. Okay. Have you guys been doing a monthly budget on paper? Or yeah, I've been doing – not on paper. Um, I made like a budget on Excel and – the thing is, is, I haven't been following it lately. I've been spending a little bit more because things have been more pricey, and I just stopped looking at it because avocados went up from seven dollars to twelve dollars, you Oof. know, a pack. So time to not get avocados, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> time to find a different vegetable. Maybe we go potatoes yeah. this this week, this month. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I guess we could cut back on stuff like that. Here's what I want you to do. I'm going to gift you every dollar premium because it beats – I don't want to stare in an Excel spreadsheet. That's depressing. Let's leave the pivot tables to the nerds. So every dollar is going to make it a lot simpler for you to create this budget, to stick to it. And that's the key is you can't just make it and then look back at it a month later and go, oh, whoops, we went over. Before you make the purchase, I want you to look at your budget and go, okay, we've got this much left. I'm going to make sure to not go over in that category. And give yourself okay. some grace. It may take a, a few months to get the hang of this, but once you do, you're going to feel way more in control of your money. So hang on the line. Right. Austin's going to pick up, and we'll gift you guys Ramsey Plus, a one-year subscription that includes every dollar premium, our budgeting tool, and Financial Peace University. So watch those videos with your husband, and I think it'll get you fired up to get rid of this debt and get real creative to find any way you can to make it not a three-, four-year slog. But you guys can do this. This is not a, a giant mountain. I mean, it's it's a little less than half of your income. And I think if you get that up, you'll feel the progress. Thank you so much for the call. Chad joins us up next in Minneapolis. Chad, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. What's going on? Well, looking for some advice on how to make an impact with my 14-year-old son. So um, divorced uh, from my ex. We got divorced about three years ago. Um, I've, I've really been in on the, the Ramsey method and, and got myself out of debt following the divorce, um, really gotten into saving and, and, and being very intentional with my money. I'm proud of you, man. That's 14 awesome. Year, yeah. 14 year olds with being impressionable and thinking they've got to have X, Y, and Z to be cool. He, my, I, I, my ex has very poor spending habits and, you know, you know car every a new car every 18 months um you know racks up credit cards so she has a very flashy lifestyle from the outside but i i because i was there for 15 years i know without having to see her checkbook what the backside looks like how, how do i show how do you influence your team to not be like their mom <laughs> To not be like their mom, yeah. Without without piercing my own veil to say, hey, yep, I I I have a truck that you make fun of, but it's bought and paid for, 
And, oh, by the way, for the last three years while I'm driving a, a car that's got 270,000 miles on it, I, yeah. I've put away an extra $60,000 because of it. Well, the truth is a 14-year-old has no perception of money. And so they just see the fancy thing. They don't care what it costs. They don't care how much debt you have because they don't have any money problems right now. And so obviously we don't want to disparage your ex. We want to be kind, uh, but we also want to just focus on what we can control, and that's ourselves. So I think you focus on the principles and not the person. So focus on here's why I live a debt-free lifestyle. Here's what it can do for you. Here's what I want for you in your future. Uh, maybe you show them you know, the documentary Borrowed Future and go, hey, this is what happens when you live a lifestyle that includes debt. It holds you back from having a family, buying the things that you want, and it, they may look good on the outside, but man, their life is stressful. And then ask, have you ever been stressed? What are you stressed out about right now? That's the kind of stress that debt is going to add to your life, and I want the best for you. So if you start to have those kinds of conversations, I found that more is caught than taught. And that 14-year-old, as their brain starts to mold further, they're going to want to be like dad more than mom. Eventually. It may not happen tomorrow, because right now, if I'm 14, right. I want the flashy car. But right now, right. they don't have an income, and so they're, they hopefully can't make terrible financial decisions. But as they get closer, your job is to be a great role model, a great influence in their life, to be a level-headed voice of truth, and that's all you can do. And the rest you got to let go of. And there might be a conversation with the ex and say, hey, listen, I'm trying to teach these principles. I want the best for our 14-year-old. I'm sure you do too, and that's what this looks like. And maybe that means we're not talking about money and how they should build their credit. Leave that to dad. This is The Ramsey Show. There's so much crazy going on, and people are looking for direction on how to handle their finances day to day. But they're also struggling to see how it's even possible to build wealth. There's too many hope stealers out there, and that's why I'm excited for our Building Wealth live events where we walk you through all the crazy and teach you the steps to build real, lasting wealth. The financial principles we teach here are the only principles that work in prosperous times and in hard times. And no matter where you are with your money today, we want to show you that you can get on the path to building wealth. The Building Wealth Live Tour has already made a couple of awesome stops in Vegas and Orlando. Thank you all for joining us there. And we're wrapping up our spring portion of the tour here, uh, and we're just getting started. We've got a few stops planned for this fall. So if you're in any of the following cities, we'd love to see you out there. Or if you want to travel, we've got lots of people that drive hours, fly to make it to these events. So Phoenix will be with you September 13th. Sacramento will be with you November 1st. We'll be at Minneapolis November 10th. And finishing out in San Antonio November 15th. Dave Ramsey, Rachel Cruz, Dr. John Deloney, Ken Coleman, and I will all be there. We can't wait to see you guys. Tickets start at just 25 bucks, or you can get a four-pack of tickets starting at 60 bucks. So bring your friends. It's going to be amazing. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash events to reserve your seats now. Open phones this hour. The number to call is 888-825-5225. Mike joins us up next in Dayton. Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you. What's going on? I have a uh, well. I have a job dilemma. Um, I am uh, uh, doing something I sort of enjoy in terms of uh, I've been an engineer and I've, I've been teaching and consulting, doing engineering work on the side for some time, uh, a couple of years actually. Um, consulting is going really well, uh, but at times it's kind of worn me out. I've been stretched thin, working seven days a week for some stretches. And uh, I have an opportunity now to kind of go back to a more traditional engineering type of role. It would essentially double my base pay, probably um, similar to what I make in consulting or more, but only working one job. It put me on the road a couple weeks a month, um, and I guess I'm just uh, uh, kind of in a dilemma about the path to choose here. Uh, it, 
I'm 50 years old and I, I feel like I'm in my prime earning years and I don't want to shortchange, you know, the generations that follow uh, since I'm, you know, if I'm not working, you know, and making the most I should be making at this time of my life. So the pro is you get to work half as much and get paid the same amount. I wouldn't say half as much. No, I would say actually, I, okay. So you, the second that the engineering job, I actually will probably in the end work a little more. Um, the one I'm working now, I'm finally at the point where I'm kind of getting caught up and I'm not, uh, not working the seven day schedule anymore. I'm starting to slow it down a little bit, but I'll probably end up making less money. So basically I, I'll have a better schedule, make less money versus making more money and, um, uh, being able to, you know, leave a little bit more, solve one more financial. So you're taking a slight pay cut, but up. you get your life back. Where I'm at now, I'd be taking a slight pay cut. Yeah. Uh, if I took the job, I would um, be getting more time on the road, um, less of my life, and, of course, more money. Are you single? No, no. Married. Um, two kids that have just, uh, essentially, they've left home. You know, they're in the area. But essentially, they've left home. Uh, they're in their twenties. What does your spouse think about this? Uh, she's kind of on the fence as well. Um, we are uh, debt free. Uh, we're both uh, about fifty years old. We don't have a house payment at this point. We awesome got our net worth up, and I think we're and when we followed a lot of the Ramsey principles for about took about seventeen years from having nothing to to be in a. I don't know, I guess with the house, about $1.1 million. Wow, way to and, go, um, man. So what I'm hearing that, is you don't you know, necessarily no, need the money. Uh, not necessarily, no. It's more for, I think, I guess, legacy purpose. Um, I guess I'm kind, of, I'm kind of driven by that just because I feel like... Uh, what does legacy look like you know, for I you? Can, well, it's not certainly not just financial, but it's, it's about kind of changing the direction and um, that's already happened with one generation, but I really feel like I want to be involved in changing direction for multiple generations. And I think that, you know, part of that is the financial. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I mean, I think you guys are already doing that. I don't know that taking this job or staying with this one is going to change that very much. I'm just wondering, does your wife want you at home more versus being gone half the month as the kids are out of the house? Yeah, I think, Yes, at least so far, I think she would prefer me to be home. But. Could you find something that's just, you know, 40 hours a week local that you could do for the same pay or more? Have you looked into options? I, yeah, I actually think, um, oh, I certainly could. Um, I think, you know, I'm fortunate enough to have pretty high demand skill set at this point. I think that's um, what I'm, I'm thinking. I mean, I would look at being on the road is fun if you're a young single actually, guy. Some people are built for that to be on the road that much, but at your age with where you're at in life, I don't think it's something that you're you're jonesing for. Does that excite you to be on the road? Not to be on the road. The work excites me. Being on the road doesn't um I don't have any particular uh any particular love affair with uh, being away from home and that that's lost its cool factor a long time ago. And that's why I go, I think you need more options right now. You feel kind of backed into a corner where you go, well, it's either this or that. And I think there's more options out there for a sharp guy who's 50 with your experience in the engineering field, which as you know, our, our millionaire study that we did engineers were the number one um, millionaire career. And so that tells me you've got a great head on your shoulders, and there's a lot of great engineering jobs, and I'm sure there's ones in your area that are a little more sustainable for your lifestyle at this point, and you can still leave a legacy, whatever that looks like for you, without having to be on the road all the time and without a pay cut. Yeah, I think oh, – well, that's definitely true. I actually think the job would be on the road, even though that's, there's road stuff to it. I actually think it provides more flexibility for me schedule-wise than um, – the traditional 40 hour job. Now do both jobs have uh, equal similar. kind of benefits? Uh, yeah, benefits are similar. Um, benefits are similar. I, I probably would be able to put an extra by my numbers, probably put an extra five grand a year in a 401k. Um, but I'm, you know, at, at this age, the extra five grand a year certainly matters, but I don't know what's an already built up pretty well. If it's going to be that big a factor, if it's life changing. 
Yeah. Well, I think you have this conversation with your wife, and I think you've got some homework to find out what the other options out there. Maybe you start getting some interviews with other places locally. Um, I don't know. What kind of engineering are you in? I'm an electrical engineer. I do a lot of um, a lot of automation work. Um, yeah, a lot of automation, a lot of industrial security and networking. Cool. Well, I'm going to keep doing research. I'm going to go into research mode and find out what all the options are and who wants to hire Mike in today's market and uh, what do those pay, what makes sense for my family. And the truth is you don't need the money. You're not desperate. So I'm going to find something that's sustainable for the next you know, 10 years, however long you choose to work, um, that won't burn you out. And so that's the route I'm going because you guys have done the hard work. You've sacrificed to get to this point. You've got a paid-for house. The kids are out. And uh, now it's like, what, what is the vision we want for the next 10 years, the next 20 years? And start making decisions through that filter. Okay. Mike well, was flabbergasted well, by that. Absolutely, Mike. <laughs> he's He's yeah. got the dilemma, man. That's a tough one. Uh, there's no right or wrong answer here. And the truth is, a guy as sharp as you, if you take the on-the-road job and six months later you go, this ain't it, chief, you can go find something else. And uh, I think a lot of places would be happy to hire an electrical engineer who has no debt, no debt hanging on their shoulders, who's just happy to be an electrical engineer. So thank you so much for that call. Open phones this hour. The number to call is 888-825-5225. I'm George Campbell, Ramsey personality and host of the Fine Print and Entree Leadership Podcast. If you want to check out those other shows, then you can do that on the Ramsey Network or wherever you listen to great podcasts. This is The Ramsey Show. show. I'm George Camel, Ramsey Personality, your host this hour. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. Find out for yourself why Blinds.com's 100% satisfaction guarantee means even if you mismeasure or pick the wrong color, they'll remake your blinds for free. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Just use the promo code Ramsey to get the best deal. Today's question comes from Jake in California. He says, I'm confused about your recommendation to invest 15% of our household income. Do my wife and I each invest 7.5% into our 401k to meet the 15% rule for baby step four? Sounds too easy when I type it out, so I need some clarification. Well, Jake, yeah, you're probably overthinking this. So here's an easy way to do it. 15% of your household income means you invest 15% of your income and she invests 15% of her income. And as a total, that adds up to 15% of your household income. So no need to overcomplicate it. You don't have to do seven and a half each. If you make 40 and she makes 60, just take 15% of both of those and invest that into your 401k. Uh, Good question. It does come up uh, more often than not, and it's simpler than you think. It means exactly what it sounds like, and it's simple, but it's hard to do. And that's why we teach people in baby step four, once you're out of consumer debt, once you have that fully funded emergency fund, that is the time to invest 15%. A lot of people call in, they're doing 17 things at once. They're trying to pay off some debt. They're trying to get the match because it's free money. They're trying to save up the emergency fund, trying to save up for a down payment on a house at a car. And they're wondering why they're not making progress. And so that is why we teach baby step four, 15% into retirement at baby step four and no earlier. And 15% is not 20% because we want to have margin to save for college, pay off the house early. And once we do that, we can increase that and really build wealth. Thank you so much for the question. Open phones this hour, 888 5225 Connie joins us up next in Virginia. Connie, welcome to the show. 
Hi, thank you for having me. Happy to take your call. What's going on? So I recently found out my car is kind of on its last legs. I'm driving a Beater 06 minivan, um, yes. and she doesn't have much time left. But the Does she have a name? Exactly, uh, she doesn't. Oh, that's sad. You got to give him a name. Yes. Give him some dignity. Yeah. She's just a she for now. Okay. Um, but I wasn't able to get an estimate on exactly how much time that means, um, but I'm in step two. And I've made significant progress. Well, to me, it is um, in paying off my debt. I have my $1,000 emergency fund. Um, But I've started saving for a car also because if she goes out on me, I have no way to get to work. So um, I was wondering, my question is, should I cut back on paying off debt and go back to minimum payments on all my accounts to be able to save up for the car in case it does go out? Um, or should I keep kind of splitting 50-50 how much money I'm pouring into those? Yes, I would definitely, this is your A1, is to save up for this car. And if that means pausing the debt snowball temporarily, then I'm okay with that. I just don't want you to get too comfortable where you go, well, it's been seven months and I'm still saving up for this car. This is like an emergency where we're going, how do I find four that $5,000 in a few months to be able right. to switch cars? So is this thing in the shop? What do you mean by last leg? You've got an estimates on it? Uh, I got a second opinion, but both people I took it to said this is going to be, I probably have through the summer. Through the summer. So, wow, they're putting a life expectancy on this thing. Right. That's dark times. But they weren't able to say if that means through the winter also, or it could go out in two months or six. And there's no there's no use in trying to repair the issue. It's probably worth no. more than the car at that point. No, it's an engine issue, and I got the car for 3000 and how much money do you have to your name? You said you have a thousand dollar emergency fund. Anything else? Um, I have a thousand dollar emergency fund. I have right under a thousand saved for the car so far, which I started um, just last month. I've been really trying to focus on that. Um, okay. I make about twenty five hundred a month. What do you do for a living? Um, I'm a peer recovery specialist and an at addiction recovery clinic. Cool. And that twenty five hundred a month is that take home pay or is that gross? That's take home. Okay, so you're taking home about thirty grand a year, and are you working forty hours a week? Correct. Okay, is there anything you can do beyond that forty hours to bring in extra income right now? Yes, I have started. Um, I do makeup for weddings, bridesmaids, and stuff oh, cool. um, on the weekends, and that's not a consistent booking though. It's kind of when I can get it and when it's needed. But when I can do that, I can make a couple hundred on a Saturday. So good. Well, I would do that on top of something that's steady, where they just go, "Hey, how many hours can you work this week? All right, you can give us fifteen hours. Let's go do that and make twenty bucks an hour." to save up for this car. And then once you're out of debt, you can stop doing all the side hustles that you want, maybe continue the makeup one if you enjoy it. Uh, So that's what I would start doing is looking for ways to increase income, make your minimum payments on your debt. And once this car situation is remedied, then we can get after the rest of the debt. So what's the total debt that you have? Um, I have a little over 40,000 left to pay off. What kind of debt? It's all medical debt. Oh, wow. How old is the medical debt? Um, up to, I already had one, they were all several in collections and a couple fell off. So they were over seven years old, but how old are they up from about five years to recently? Wow. Well, the silver lining with medical debt is that it can often be negotiated. Have you tried to negotiate it down and ask them what they would take in a lump sum? I did that um, with the more recent ones. I haven't done that with the ones in collections yet. Um, I was able to get financial aid for more recent stuff, but um, the old debt was, I have not tried to negotiate or settle that yet. Okay. There are some kind of hardship programs and income-based programs that you can look into with these hospitals because sometimes if your Mm -hmm. income is below a certain threshold, they may wipe out the debt. Okay. So maybe something to just look into. I don't know for sure in your area and which hospital and the medical bills, but I want you to really get creative and do some research and do all that you can to negotiate this debt down so that if they go, hey, you got 40 grand in debt, we'll take 10 to call it good. And at that point, okay. you got to have that money ready. And so I would stack up money, get the car remedied, and then stack up more money so that when they come at you with a, here's our lump sum, if you can pay this, we'll wipe it. I would go for that. 
Okay. And that will get you out of debt a whole lot faster. Yeah. I hate to slow down on the debt to save for the car because this has been such a big step for me. Um, I'm in recovery from addiction myself, and I have spent the last few years piecing my life back together, and getting financial freedom is a huge step for me. Um, so I'm not excited about slowing down my debt-free journey to do this mm. car thing. But Wow. Well, Connie, you are a warrior, and I love that you're now helping others get on the path to recovery. Thank you. That's so cool. That That's a lot of meaning and purpose in that kind of work, and uh, we're rooting for you. I want to gift you Ramsey Plus, which includes Every Dollar Premium and Financial Peace University. I hope that encourage you, encourages you along the journey and allows us to kind of walk with you through this process and uh, allows you to start to budget even more, get that budget dialed in to where you go, okay, I can spend less, I can save more, here's what the budget looks like, I'm tracking it, I'm giving every dollar a job, and you feel some control over your situation. So hang on the line, Austin's going to pick up and gift that to you, and watch the Financial Peace University lessons as well in there, and I think that will give you some pep in your step uh, along this debt-free journey, and please, would you call us back when you're debt-free or come visit us? Yes, thank you. Love to hear that. Rooting for you, Connie. What a cool story. Recovering addict, now helping others get on the path to recovery, cleaning up this debt. We love to hear stories like that. Wow. Well, as you know, folks, there's a lot going on in the world right now, and uh, financial peace is a huge part of it. And I was just on our local Fox affiliate, Fox Nashville here, talking about inflation and what to do with your 401k and how to find margin in your budget. And we acknowledge that it's not easy right now. It's easy to give you some blanket advice and tell you, hey, go follow the baby steps. But we know people are really, really struggling right now, and uh, we're rooting for you. And if we can help in any way, please check out all of the resources we have at RamseySolutions.com. We would love to be of service to you. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. My thanks to all the folks in the booth, Austin, Will, Zach, Kelly, Andrew, you name it. They're in there making it happen day after day and some engineers in there too. And you, America, appreciate you guys listening. We couldn't do the show without you. We love you. We'll be back with you before you know it. Do you love a good Dave rant? Want to see the latest Ramsey Show videos going viral? Check out your favorite moments from The Ramsey Show on YouTube. Go watch and subscribe to The Ramsey Show channel on YouTube. about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. From Ramsey Network, this is The Ramsey Show, where we help you get control of your money, get ahead in your career, and get on the path to living well. I'm George Campbell, your host today, and uh, the number to call is 888-825-5225. I'd love to help you take the right next step in your financial journey. Matt is kicking us off this hour in Denver, Colorado. Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks, George. How are you? I'm doing great. How can I help? Well, um, my household has uh, three vehicles, two that have over 100,000 miles on it, and one has about 66,000 miles. One's about ready to die. The transmission's going out. I'd like to buy a new car, and my wife would like to buy a used car. Ah, okay. What's what's forcing you to get a new car? Well, no, nothing's forcing me to get a new car, but you know the one with the transmission problems. I'm thinking it it could die on us at any time. Okay. So what? So I'd like to. What's the argument with her saying I want a used car and you want the new car? What's the contention? <laughs> well, uh, she's a super saver. I'm a saver, and. We, we've saved all our lives, and I would just like to, you know, I think a new car would be better because uh, the used car prices are pretty inflated right now, and we have the money to do it. How? What's your net worth? Um, we have, uh, well, over, I would say close to $3 million in assets. Wow. Good for you guys. Thanks. So have you been following the Ramsey plan? Do you guys have a paid-for house in Baby Step 7? We do. 
wonderful news. Well, I mean, you guys have scratched and clawed to get to this point. I don't see the harm in you getting a new car at this point since you are millionaires. Does she just feel okay. like it's an exorbitant amount to pay? What kind of car are you looking at? Well, I would love to get a Porsche or a Corvette, um, but I'll settle for a Nissan Pathfinder. You'll settle for the Pathfinder. What's your household income? Um, about 200000 Wonderful. And uh, what are these cars worth currently, the three of them? Uh, the Pathfinder is about 50000 Okay. And the other, you said you've got three cars total. Yeah, we have three drivers, soon to have four. Okay. And so once this car goes, the transi- transmission dies, do you still need three cars total? It would be nice. Okay. Because you have multiple drivers in the family. Correct. All right. Well, what is her hesitation now that you guys have $3 million in assets, you have a paid-for house? You know, where is your money going currently? Are you guys having fun? Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we travel quite a bit. Um, I just, uh, I think she thinks it's exorbitant, and she'd rather get a used car. And I would, it, this would be my car. Mm. So I've been waiting for a while to get something like this. Well, maybe you take her for a test drive. And uh, she gets excited about it. I don't know. Maybe she'll never be excited about whatever car you choose. But she doesn't have to drive it, right? Correct. Okay. Well, normally we tell people don't ever buy a new new car unless you have a million-dollar net worth or higher because you can't take the hit on depreciating on a depreciating asset like a car. But you guys can take this hit. You make great money. Uh, We also say don't let your cars add up to anything with a motor in it add up to more than half of your annual income. And so I think if you kind of show her these parameters and go, hey, we're living way below our means right now. We've worked really hard to get to this point. Now's the time to live like no one else. We lived like no one else, so later we could live like no one else. And that is what it looks like. It's okay to have something nice because it doesn't have us. We're paying cash. We're millionaires. This is why we do what we do. Have you explained that to her? I I will try. I mean, I'm of no use telling it to you. So it's really – you know her better than I do. So you've got to appeal to her senses and go, hey, listen, I know this feels like a lot, and this is more than we've ever spent on a vehicle. Outside of our home, this is probably the biggest purchase you've ever made, right? I'm pretty close. Are you like an exorbitant spender all the time? Are you buying boats and toys constantly? No. No. I mean, I'm a saver. I mean, occasionally if I want to buy something, you know, of course – after I ask her, um, I'll buy it. But uh, we're, we're both savers, but she is over the top saving. Mm. Well, I think she maybe needs to, to come your way a little bit and go, hey, we've saved. We have plenty. We're going to be okay. Is it a security thing for her where she goes, we need to keep saving? This is unwise to spend this money on a car when it could go towards X, Y, Z. Well, I, I think she's probably worried that you know maybe if she decides to quit her job, that uh, you know, that would bring our you know, our income to probably well, it would be more than half of a hit. Does she want to quit? Are our... you guys close to retirement? Well, I'm about eight to ten years away. Uh, she could probably work another twenty, but she, I think she'd like to quit. Well, it sounds like you'll be able to with all of the assets you guys have built up. That's that's my uh, contention so I, as well. I think you paint her a picture of what the future looks like, what retirement looks like, and this car becomes a part of that vision of, hey, the next 10 years, here's what I'm hoping for us. What are you thinking? Here's when I want you to retire. What are you thinking? And as part of that, I would love to get this for me. I've worked really hard. You know, We've worked hard for this family, and it's okay for us to get this car and have nice things because we're not going into debt for it. We've worked real hard, sacrificed to become – Baby steps millionaires, are you okay with this? And I think if you do it with that kind of uh, you know humility and intention, I think she'll come around. Plus the test drive. That's what you know. You get her in a test drive. I don't know. She may not be a car person. She's she's not a car person. She sees she it as utilitarian and goes, "You're going to spend how much is this car going to cost?" You think? Uh, fifty fifty thousand. Okay, that feels very reasonable. If you're paying cash, you make two hundred grand and you have three million dollars in assets. There are people who make $30,000 who have called in buying a $50,000 car and financing the whole thing. Yeah. So nothing about your situation feels frivolous or crazy. So you're on the right path. Uh, it's just I don't know how that conversation is going to go with her. 
Um, but showing her the numbers and showing her what a plan looks like for the future, giving her that security that this is not going to throw off your retirement plan doing this, I think that might be helpful for you. Thank you so much for the call. All right, folks, here's some sad news for you. Half of Americans over 65 will need long-term care. And the average cost of that care is $138,000. So you've got to plan for your long-term care needs now. And I talk to people all the time whose, quote, plan is to let Medicare pay for it. I've got news for you, though. Medicare won't pay for everything. That's why we recommend long-term care insurance for people age 60 and over. It helps pay for nursing home care, assisted living, and in-home care costs like medical equipment, help getting dressed and eating, and home modifications so you can get around safely in your home. That way you get to keep your independence and your savings. Long-term care insurance protects your family too. Your spouse and kids won't have to bear the financial and emotional burden of caring for you. And since you're not using all your savings on long-term care, you'll be able to enjoy your retirement years with your family and leave a legacy that provides for them after you're gone. We've got a network of endorsed local providers that will help you understand your long-term care insurance options and find the right policy for you. That's why they're Ramsey Trusted, because they'll put you first no matter what. So if you're 60 or over, it's time to connect with a trusted ELP and get your free long-term care insurance quotes. Just go to RamseySolutions.com slash long-term care to get started. That's RamseySolutions.com slash long-term care. Show. I'm George Camel, Ramsey Personality. Open phones this hour, 888 5225 Donnie joins us up next in St. Louis. Donnie, welcome to the show. Hi, George. Hey. Uh, appreciate everything you guys do. Um, my uh, question is, I'm going to be debt-free in July. Awesome. And I will have my emergency fund fully funded um, September of next year. And at that point, I'll be saving up for a house. But the problem is I'll be 47 with no retirement. Mm. So I'm trying to figure out what's the max amount of time I need to give myself to save it for the house before I, you know, bite the bullet and start contributing to retirement before it's too late. So you have Um, zero in retirement currently. Yeah. And you're renting. And you said you'll be debt-free in July, but the emergency fund won't be funded until next September 2023? Yeah. Why has it taken so long? Um, I'm going to do uh, six months worth of uh, expenses for the emergency fund and also saving for uh, uh, 15000 for a vehicle in case, because I don't want to ever have a car payment again either. Mm. So okay. 15 for emergency fund and 15 for a vehicle. What's your income? Uh, about 73 All right. Is that household income? Are you single? Yeah. Okay. So you're making 73 you got nothing in retirement. You want to get a house, which I want you to be a homeowner eventually. And you're looking right. at, you won't start saving for this house or investing for retirement until September 2023 at this rate. Yes. I think we need to do better than that. That's just too far away for me to be comfortable with. So the question is, what um, can I we do? I will be able to save up uh, 2440 a month. That's how much you can save up per month? Yeah. Okay. That's just doing 40 hours. That's without overtime. So that's worst case scenario because I like to prepare for worse and hope for the best. But Yeah. I mean, the next, if you want to do this and do it right, the next few years are going to be tough and you're going to be mm-hmm. working overtime for a while right. until we're in this house and we're in a good place where we're investing 15%. So I think you need to have a plan for both. I don't want you just investing and never get into a house because I want you to have a fixed expense. I mean, you've seen how right. rent increases have been going lately. And over the yeah. next 10, 20 years, when you think about how rent's going to increase, um, I want you to have a fixed expense there and eventually have a paid-for house in retirement. Yeah. My so, worry is is that if I did, if I saved up twenty four forty a month and saved up for a $200,000 house, that would put me at July of 2030. 
That's, have that. that's not okay. The problem is, is the worth houses going up now. You know, you are a hundred thousand more than that now than were a couple of years ago. Yeah. My worry is seven years from now when I'd have that saved up or seven years after emergency funds funded, you know, where they're going to be at. Well, you know? I would do my best to speed up this process of getting to a fully funded emergency fund. And maybe you go three months. Is your job pretty mm-hmm. stable? Yes. So what if you split the difference and you went three or four months in the emergency fund and then you got after 15% of your household income going to retirement and then saving up a down payment with any money that's left over? How long would it take okay. you then to save up, let's say, 10% of a reasonable house in your area? Maybe it's a condo. Well, I'd want to do at least 20% and um, to get rid of the PMI. Sure. Well, um, right now at your age with where you're my at. Original, my I'm, original plan was to save up cash for a house originally. <laughs> so I'd love to do because I'd love to never have debt again. But I don't Well, know our original plans are out the window. Now we've got to look at yeah. what the future looks like for Donnie at 47 who doesn't want to work till he's 70, I assume. Right. And so I'm looking at what do we do in the next 15 years to set you up for success so that you can retire with dignity, have money in the bank, and be in a home. And so that might look like we're not paying cash. We're not able to put 20% down. Well, we can put 10% down and eventually we'll get rid of that PMI once we have enough equity. It's not going to be there forever. Mm -hmm. So I don't like that, but I also don't want you saving up for a house for eight years. Right. That's not a good plan either. Yeah. So let's you guys say it's like three to five years sometimes. Yeah. My goal for you is how do we get, how do we get into a house in the next three years while saving 15% for retirement? And then I want to, I want you to reverse engineer it and go, okay, what kind of income would I need to have in order to do that? What do my expenses and budget need to look like in order to do that? Okay. So that's what I'm doing if I'm in your shoes. Are you doing a budget currently? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to gift you Ramsey Plus to help you along this journey that includes Every Dollar Premium, our budgeting tool, and Financial Peace University. I think you need a little fire under your belly to get you on this plan and do it much faster. Because an eight-year plan, I'm I'm depressed thinking about it. That's just too long. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're going to be your late 50s well, be, finally getting into a house. Money, though. I'm working overtime, but yeah. So w- let's find out what you can do to get that 73 to 83 to 93 to create that margin. And let's see what expenses we can cut and go bare bones and go, I want to be in this house in three years. I want to be investing a year from now. And then you'll have some breathing room. And in 15 years, worst case, you'll have a paid for house if you do a 15-year fixed rate mortgage, which puts you at, what, 62? No. Now, you're not going to be in the house for a few years, so let's call it 65. You're 65. Now you've got a paid for house. You've been investing for 16, 17 years at that point. So now you have a good chunk of change in there and you've reduced your expenses because you don't have a mortgage payment anymore. Right. So I would make that your vision for that kind of freedom later on in life. But it's going to be a slog to get there for the next few years. But I would have a plan for both. I don't want you just investing and not focus on the house. I don't want you just focus on the house and not investing. So I want you to get investing as soon as possible and do whatever you can to get this debt Rid of fast, get that emergency fund in place, and uh, get at it, man. Rooting for you. May joins us up next in Austin, Texas. May, welcome to the show. Hey, George. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. How can I help? So I am about three weeks away from paying off my debt, Woo! but I, <laughs> yeah, but the timing coincides somewhat unexpectedly with needing to buy a car. So my question is, given the used car market and my general unfamiliarity with it, I'm not sure what I can get with the amount or what to set aside from, like, waiting to pay off my debt. And I was looking for some guidance on how much I should spend on a car. Okay. What's your income? Uh, 55K. All right. And you're three weeks away from being completely debt-free. And how much money do you have in the bank? Uh, Just my $1,000 emergency fund right now. Okay. So once you get this debt out of your life in a few weeks, then we can focus on stacking up some money for the car. And obviously, we've got to get that fully funded emergency fund in place, but this car sounds urgent. Yeah. What's driving the urgency? You don't have a car at all right now? Yeah, I've been borrowing a car, and they're going to need it back. Ah. And you're using this car to get to work, I assume? Yeah. 
Okay. Is there public transportation options in your area? No, I commute pretty far. Okay. It's a far commute. Well, let's get you in a car ASAP for your your income. I mean, obviously, we need to get a car right now. It's not going to be the car. So let's let's right. paint a picture in our mind of what this car is. It's going to be nothing fancy. I probably would look mm-hmm. at spending five thousand dollars in today's economy. That would be considered a beater. Uh, so that's what I would start looking at. I would probably jump on Auto Trader and all these different sites and see what kind of car I'd be looking at. And I would go for um, you know a Camry, an Accord, a Civic, something in that of that nature that's going to be reliable for you, that can be high mileage and still get you from A to B safely. All right. And I don't care what the color is. The more rusted, the better, um, because that, <laughs> that'll give you more buying power to get a deal. So make sure you don't get hosed on fees. Don't pay anything other than a small dock fee and sales tax. If they're trying to push you into warranties and other kinds of fees, walk away, run away. And this you could look on Facebook Marketplace. That could be a good way to go with a private sale. They'll be better at negotiating on that end. So that might be an option for you too. But right now, I'd go into research mode as you pay off this debt and figure out what kind of car we're saving up for and then stack cash as fast as you can. Can you get a side job? Okay. Can you do some side hustles in the meantime? Um, I, yeah, I just signed up to do to teach summer school. So awesome. That'll be coming up. Let's go, mate. <laughs> hey, this is temporary sacrifice for long-term gains. You'll get there. Congrats on debt freedom. Hope to get you in a car soon and get you on the path to building wealth. That's the goal. Thank you so much for the call. This is The Ramsey Show. Back to the Ramsey Show. I'm Ramsey personality George Camel, taking your calls today to help you with your life and your money. The number is 888 825 5225. Colin joins us up next in Oklahoma City. Colin, welcome to the show. How are you doing, George? Great. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. I can't complain too bad. So, I had a few questions with, uh, for you. Um, I recently just graduated college two weeks ago, actually. Congrats. And I just started my first full-time job. Nice. So, obviously, with that, I've seen a significant increase in my income. And I do have school uh, student loan debt. And I'm wanting to know from you, from your perspective, going from a college student that obviously wasn't making that much money to having a significant increase in money, how should I budget that to where I can pay off my student loans as quickly as possible? Well, the short answer is you're going to keep living like a college student until we get rid of this mm-hmm. debt. So that's not the fun answer. The fun answer is you have a job two weeks out of college, man. That's amazing. Yes, sir. How much are you making? Uh, I just started out with 33K a year, and my student loans are 18K. Okay. And my problem is that I've never really budgeted, and uh, I know that's obviously an issue. Like I went through last month and added up everything, and I spent $502 in food last month. Whenever I feel like that could be down because that's eating out a lot and stuff. Hundred percent. I did the same thing when I first started budgeting. I was like, I'm a small man and I'm spending seven hundred dollars on food every month. Where is this going? So I love that you're paying attention to this stuff, especially at your age. How old are you? I'm 22. Actually, just turned 22 yesterday. Awesome. Well, happy birthday. That's fantastic. Thank you. Sir. So when it comes to budgeting with this newly found income. The easiest way to do it is every dollar. So you can go download that app. I'm happy to gift you one year of Ramsey Plus, which includes the premium version of every dollar. So you can connect it to your bank. It'll track your transactions, and then you can drag them into the right categories. So here's how you want to make your budget. You're going to first list out your income. So you probably get two paychecks a month, something like that. Yes, sir. So with those paychecks, we're going to put the income at the top. And then I want your income minus all of your expenses to equal zero, meaning we've given every single dollar coming in a job. No unemployed dollars. 
So when you do that, you list out all of your expenses for the month, and this will take maybe you know three months to get the hang of and get it dialed in. You're obviously going to have your basic expenses, your food, utility, shelter, transportation. Are you renting right now? I'm actually not. I'm still living at home with my parents, but we're looking to move out with me and my girlfriend in September. Okay. Well, you don't have many expenses right now, so I would use that to your advantage while you're living at home to pay off these student loans as fast as possible. Do you have any other type of debt? I honestly don't. Nothing besides the 18K in student loans. Okay. So your take-home pay, I assume, is going to be closer to twenty four, twenty five thousand dollars $25,000 a year after taxes? Yes, sir. Somewhere around there. And is this a 40-hour-a-week job? Yes, sir. Okay. I would also look into some kind of side hustle, something you can do on top of that or overtime to increase your income, even if it's temporary, to get rid of this 18000 mm-hmm. Now, I don't know what you can do in Oklahoma City to do that. I'm sure there's lots of options. So I'd get creative. Find something that you can do that's at least 20 bucks an hour in today's market to knock out these student loans. Yes, sir. So when you make that budget, obviously I want you to be tracking it, not just make it. Once you make it, you've got to actually track it. And before you make any purchase, look at the budget and go, what does my budget say I can do? That's going to be your permission to spend. Alrighty, that's my problem is I honestly have a problem staying there when the friends want to go out and eat. So uh-huh. to Well, I think we need to set up some boundaries with friends and go, hey, I want to hang out with you guys. Can we hang your place tonight? Do we have to go out? Can we get some pizzas? You know, find ways where you can trim down. Or you go, hey, guys, I'm trying to pay off this debt. This is my this is a huge goal for me. I'd love your support in that, and that might mean I can't go out as much. Or I go out and get a soda water, and uh, I eat before I go out. Understandable. And they may think you're not cool, but I'm not really concerned with that. I'm more concerned about your financial future and you winning with money. And that's hard to do at yeah, your sure. age, uh, especially with, with friends. So that's what I would be doing, man. I'd get on on top of this thing. And I don't love the idea of, of girlfriend moving in with you. It gets real messy real quick. So I'd encourage you to find another way to live separately for now until you guys you know, are in a more committed relationship moving towards marriage. So that's my hot take, but I'm going to gift you Ramsey Plus uh, at a birthday gift partially and a graduation gift. So it's a 2-4 special here. Austin's going to pick up. We'll gift that to you and get plugged in with Every Dollar Premium. Get plugged in with the Financial Peace University videos, and uh, you'll be on your way, man, to getting rid of this student loan debt. Elizabeth joins us up next in D.C. Elizabeth, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, George, for having me. Absolutely. Honored to take your call. How can I help? Well, I I guess I needed a little encouragement, um, kind of a push to spend some of this money that we've saved up. That's Um, a fun problem to have. (laughs) Yeah, right? I know, as I'm saying it. I'm, uh, it is a good problem. Um, so my husband and I are debt free and we just sold our house in Washington. Cool. We're going to be moving. Um, so we find ourselves needing a second car where we're going to be moving. And I really, I'm, I'm having trouble pulling the trigger on spending some of this, this, um, money we got from the sale of our house on purchasing a car. We're looking at around between forty and fifty thousand dollars to buy the second car and I just I really don't like the idea of spending this what I view as kind of the house funds for purchasing our next house on uh, buying a car. So you feel like this this money kinda has a name on it already and it's future down payment. Exactly. How much uh profits are we talking from this house sale? Uh it was two hundred thousand. So netting two hundred thousand. What's your household income? It's about 300000 Woo! What do you guys do for a living? <laughs> uh, lawyers. Lawyers. Okay, fantastic. And you're debt-free. <laughs> debt-free lawyers. We're debt-free. We're debt-free lawyers. That is it's, rare. Uh, we're anomalies. Yes, it is rare. Wow. Yeah, we, we don't talk about it in a mixed company, for sure. That's amazing. Yeah, they get upset. <laughs> so you have a fully funded yeah. emergency fund? We have a fully funded emergency fund, yes. And you're investing 15% into retirement? Yep, and we're doing kids' college as well. We have two kids. Rock stars. Okay, this is a good problem to have. What is the other car worth? The other car is a 10-year-old Prius, so uh, I don't know, maybe it's got about 90,000 miles, maybe $10,000. Okay, so this is the nicest car you've ever owned as lawyers. 
Uh, we have never owned the Prius was the night a, a five year old Prius we bought was. So this feels frivolous because you're like fifty thousand on a very car. Frivolous. Okay. Yeah, it well, feels very very frivolous. I think that there's no problem in you buying a fifty thousand dollar car with your income being debt free, being where you're at in the baby steps. It's more of the emotional side of, oh my gosh, I want to throw up thinking about spending this much money while knowing we want to get into another house eventually. So are you guys renting in your new city? Yes, we'll be renting. And okay. we can spend the next year saving up you know, to replenish the house fund. That's my thinking. I would set a very specific goal for how much you want to save up how long that's going to take, when you want to get into this house, how much down uh, down payment you want to throw in there. And that way you don't feel bad because you have a plan. It doesn't feel spontaneous and frivolous. You go, no, the plan is to spend 40000 on a car, leaving us one sixty. We're going to pile on another 100 in the next year, giving us two sixty to put as a down payment. And now you go, okay, none of this feels frivolous. And if you do that with a 15-year fixed rate mortgage with at least 20% down, which you guys should easily be able to do with your income and timeline, and have that payment be no more than a quarter of your take-home pay, which making 300 grand, you've got some margin there. Yes, right. Yeah, I think the lack of a plan is probably what's making it feel frivolous. Yes. It's really just kind of in my head rather than down on paper. And so I think once you put it on paper and you look at the numbers, you go, oh, this isn't ridiculous at all. This is a small piece of our world, of our net worth, of our income that we're throwing into this car. And you know what? We've worked really hard. We're not financing a $50,000 car to impress people. We're doing it because we want it and we don't care what anyone thinks about it. And so that's what I would be doing. Get with your husband, go on a date night and start to make a plan for what your next move looks like to purchase this house. And as long as you're following those steps, You go get you that car. I'm excited for you guys. Way to go. This is The Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, James 4, 3. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on pleasures. William Arthur Ward once said, opportunities are like sunrises. If you wait too long, you miss them. Open phones this hour, 888-825-5225. I'm George Camel, your host this hour. Chris joins us up next in Los Angeles. Chris, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi, George. Hey. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. What's going on? Uh, yeah, so the short of it is um, I just graduated medical school. Uh, I'm 28 years old, um, and I uh, luckily I'm not carrying any debt um, wow. anymore. And Let's go. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, but, yeah, so my I'm about to start residency training in July, and my family as a graduation gift essentially is, is giving me $40,000 $40, um, just to kind of get my – uh, get me started um, so I can you know hit the ground running. And I have about ten thousand dollars of my own money saved, uh, and I'm just calling just to see um, you know what your opinion what your opinion is on what I can do with it uh, to kind of maximize you know my saving or my investments and retirements you know anything like that um, because I've been in school for forever and I, I don't really um, I'm kind of new to this whole uh, finance thing. Well, that's awesome, man. Thanks for joining our crazy crew here. So let me recap here. You just graduated med school completely debt-free, and you have $10,000 saved in the bank. Yes. You are a unicorn, my friend. How did you get through med school debt-free? No wrong answers. Uh, So it's a combination of a bunch of scholarships um, and family help. Awesome. Fantastic news, man. So you got forty k here, and you're going, what is my next goal? How much are you making in uh, residency? So I'll be making uh, fifty-seven thousand uh, pre-tax, uh, which I calculate out to be around forty k take-home per year. Oh, I love how nerdy you are. This makes me happy. 
Okay, so you got 40,000 take home and you have 40,000 that'll be a lump sum that you can do whatever you want with. What is your next goal for Chris? Are you going to be renting somewhere? Yes, uh, so I will be renting. Um, so I'm moving to a new city, so I, uh, I'm renting for now. Um, not really thinking about buying a house uh, at, at my current salary, I guess. Sure. Yeah, you, you don't need to rush into that. Do you have a car? Do you need a car? I will need a car because um, my car uh, will be staying here with my family, um, and I'm going to need to use some of that 40000 to um, to help purchase a car. So what I would do, I think you, your next step would be a fully funded emergency fund. You don't quite know your expenses yet, but I imagine it's going to be a little more than $10,000 for three to six months of expenses. Actually, so um, funny enough is that for the last uh, four years in med school, my um, I've actually been tracking my expenses. Uh, as you mentioned, I'm very nerdy. So I literally have like a spreadsheet going with all of my, um, all of my you know, expenses and everything. And I actually try to kind of get a better idea of how I budget it out. And I actually spend about, or with rent and everything, uh, and rent and food and everything, I, my monthly expenses are around um, 24 to 2700 per month. Awesome. Now, you're going to have a new rent that'll come into play, right? That's actually, I, that's 24 to 2700 is actually including the new rent that I'm, I'm I just uh, signed the lease for. Okay. So that adds up to about 16 grand. So let's call it 15 grand as a fully funded emergency fund for you. Does that sound good? Yeah. Yeah. So let's take five of the 40 you're getting and add it to your savings. That becomes your emergency fund. We're not touching that unless it's an actual emergency, urgent, necessary, unexpected. So the rest of the 35 sounds like you need a car. Yeah. So let's get a reasonable used car. We don't need anything fancy here. And if I'm you, I'm probably not spending, you know, more than 15 grand to do that. Does that sound reasonable? Actually, yeah, that's perfect. I've actually been looking at used cars. Um, I'm looking at around like, you know, 10 to 15 is kind of what I'm what I'm looking to, to spend on a car. Wonderful. So that then leaves you with, an, with 20 grand left. Mm-hmm. And I want you investing 15% of your income, your future income into retirement. So I'm guessing residency, you have a retirement option there? 401k, something like that? Yes. Uh, I believe my, my hospital is going to uh, match uh, 4%, I think, is what I read. Awesome. So I would invest 15% if you've got good options there. If there's a Roth 401k option, I'm an even bigger fan of that. That'll use after-tax dollars. It'll grow tax-free. So invest 15% of okay. your income. That's outside of the match. They're going to match 4%. You still invest 15% of your income there. And with that 20000 sitting there in savings, I think your next goal would be to keep stacking up money and so that eventually you'll have a nice big down payment to put down on your first house. Okay. Okay. So uh, 5K added to my 10K as an emergency fund. Correct. Um, around 15, nothing more than 15000 for uh, a nice used car. Um, yep. 15% of my uh, going, like moving forward income into a 401K, Roth 401K if I can. Yep. Um, uh, and then the rest of it just kind of pulled onto and kind of keep building it up until I can put a nice down payment. You nailed and it, I man. I love you. You're already my best friend today. I want you <laughs> to be my really doctor. This is the kind of guy <laughs> you want in this profession. That's awesome, man. Your, your family really set you up so well. I'm proud of your, you, uh, you're a sharp young dude and your family it definitely left a legacy. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's um, awesome, now, man. I guess one more question. Sure. One question on that would be like, so um, in terms of kind of just keeping the money in as like a savings, uh, so you, would you not, would you recommend or not like kind of taking some of that money and starting to invest it into like, you know, mutual funds or ETFs or anything like that? If you want, if this is a longer time horizon, you're going, hey, I know for sure I'm not getting in a house in the next three to five years. I'm okay with you parking that in index funds, mutual funds to grow while you save up. But at okay, this rate, cool. and how That's long it. are you in residency for? Three years. Three okay. Years. So I think it'd be, it'd be a cool goal personally to go, hey, at the end of residency, what if I had enough to put down on a house with my newly found income that you'll have, which I assume is going to be high six figures? Right, yeah. So I love this plan. Maybe you wait a year. Once you have that new income, you'll be able to stack up a lot of money really fast. So in four years, mm-hmm. you, uh, you put that money down on a house. Maybe you could put 40%, 50% down. Who knows? Right, okay. I love this, man. I'm proud of you, dude. I'm going to send you a copy of my favorite book that changed my life, The Total Money Makeover. Hang on. Austin's going to pick up, and we will send you a copy of that to encourage you along the journey. 
Grace joins us up next in Portland. Grace, welcome to the show. Hi, George. How are you? Doing great. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing well. Um, I guess I'll, I'll set the scene for you. Set the stage. So, <laughs> sounds good. So my, my husband and I um, bought a fixer-upper about six months ago, and we're moving out of state um, into the house. Um, so we've been doing a full renovation on it, and it became clear a few months ago that it was costing us a lot more than we thought it would. Essentially, Murphy's Law happened mm. um, to us, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, we're debt-free besides the house, and in order to stay that way, um, a few months ago, we decided to pause our retirement investment so that we could continue to cash flow this and make the house livable so we can get out of an apartment and go ahead and move in. Um, we were really comfortable with that decision because we knew it was a temporary decision and it, it should be, the renovation should be done in about a month. Um, but with all this talk of the stock market being down um, and knowing that this is kind of cleaning us out, so we'll have to rebuild our emergency fund mm. um, to make it fully funded. My question is, when do we start investing again um, do we do it immediately as soon as the renovation's over so that we can um, How old you know, are you get two? back in the market? Oh, sorry, uh, 25. Okay, so you got plenty of time on your side, but I want you to get back to yeah. investing ASAP. I don't see why you can't get the emergency fund filled back up, then immediately get to investing 15%, and any extra money okay. you have left over goes towards the renovation. And if it costs, if it's going to take longer because of that, I'm okay with that. And if you go, hey, we got to call it quits on this renovation because it's not even going to ROI. We're not going to see this appreciation in our sales price because we put fifty grand in and the house price didn't go up fifty grand. So we we do have to finish it to make it livable because we don't have anywhere else to live. Okay. Um, but but you're good with us keeping a pause on the investments until we rebuild our. Just get the emergency fund. fund built back up and don't let this renovation hold you back from doing that. I'm I'd rather you pause the renovation and get an emergency fund and be investing. That's my goal for you. I'm good with a slower pace on the rentals. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. My thanks to all the folks in the booth. To you, America, we'll be back with you. In the meantime, remember, spend wisely, save intentionally, and give generously. Do you love a good Dave rant? Want to see the latest Ramsey Show videos going viral? Check out your favorite moments from the Ramsey Show on YouTube. Go watch and subscribe to the Ramsey Show channel on YouTube.